we've grown into the oldest and most prestigious journalism awards in Asia. The Alumni Association of award recipients is now spread worldwide. Uh, we have people who've won this award in countries literally spanning the globe. This is due in no small part to the panels of highly distinguished judges who year after year unselfishly dedicate large amounts of their time and their expertise going through hours of broadcast materials, large stacks of photocopies, and numerous photographs Journalistic work that draws the world's attention not only to violations of human and political rights, but also, if I can separate these pages, but also to the hard work of those caring and brave individuals who stand up to those abuses and try to do something to stop them. This year, we have received a total of 474 submissions, an increase of more than 100 over last year and easily the largest number of entries ever. I think this avalanche of submissions is not a fluke, nor, I believe, does it result simply from putting the words human rights into a search engine, although I think maybe some uh, entrants might have succumbed to that temptation. In my view, the record number of entries this year reflects a resurgent sensitivity toward a whole range of rights-related issues, torture, political asylum, discrimination, gender equality, ageism, a lengthy list that also includes press freedom and freedom of expression. Every day, every week, every month, and every year, we should be celebrating human rights across China and across the world. So I hope that with these awards, we can pay tribute to the best in journalism that really shows and rewards those journalists who go out to tell the stories of people who do not have those basic rights, uh, who do not have those basic freedoms. And for journalists who do that, it takes not only commitment to being a fantastic journalism, the long hours, the investigation, sometimes the danger that people go through uh, when they're doing their reporting. But more than that, it's about thinking about other people in the world, thinking beyond what their organizations might do for profit to really make a difference to many, many people and to bring an understanding to the community at large. Um, I think also, this year, maybe the Human Rights Press Awards takes on an even more special meaning in Hong Kong. It's been a harrowing few months for journalists in Hong Kong. People have been scared. People are discussing what's coming next. People are worried that the basic right of freedom of expression is something that we may not have here forever, something that may be slipping underneath beneath our feet. So for those from the Hong Kong press today, I really would like to say a special tribute and a special welcome to the FCC. We care about you, we're worried about you, and we would also like to see the press in Hong Kong continue to be a place where you can go out and tell stories and speak your mind. Good afternoon. Um, again, thank you for Hong Kong Journalists Association. Amnesty International uh, Foreign Correspondents Club. It is truly, sorry, lost my kids. Um, uh, truly special for me to be back in Hong Kong and uh, speaking to you at this location. I want to congratulate all the journalists who are receiving the award uh, for the prestige award for covering human rights. I also have been thinking, what can I say? What can I offer uh, to share this moment with all of you on the subject of human rights and press freedom? Myself, uh, from mainland China, uh, went to the United States when I was 25 as a uh, astrophysics graduate student getting a PhD on cosmic rays. Uh, but 1989, uh, we all know what's happening, what was happening in Beijing, uh, draw me back to China from the United States. I actually passed through Hong Kong. Uh, it was my first time to Hong Kong. And after that journey, I spent two months in China from June to August 1989. 
I went back to the United States, left my academic career, became a human rights activist. I run an organization called Human Rights in China, uh, based in New York, but we, later on we established a Hong Kong office. I came down to uh, Hong Kong many times, 1996, 1995, to establish our office. Uh, after 97, for many years, uh, I, I, I'm a political exile that I don't have a visa, that I couldn't come to Hong Kong anymore until a few years ago, I now I become an American citizen. So I can come here uh, with, without a visa. I also have not been returned to China since 1989. So this is my, as close as I can get to my homeland. I cannot help to share a small story before I talk about my current work following internet in China. Um, the story I want to share you, with you is a personal experience that I had on the 1989, June 8th. I, as a student from China, from the United States, saw what happened in Tiananmen Square the tanks, the machine guns, the blood. And I decided to take my part of small action to go back to China, to be with my people, the city I grew up with, and to see what I can do at the moment, at that moment in the history. It was a very personal act that everyone I know, my fr I didn't tell my family, Everyone, my friends, my host family, tells me, don't go. It's dangerous. It's useless, right? The, 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 the military already cleaned the square. It's crackdown already happened. And what's the point? You are going to back to China then, now. I still decide to go. I was 28. Uh, my airplane took a transfer from Hong Kong to Beijing. The few hours I was waiting at the Hong Kong airport. Some of you lived in 1989 that days uh, in Hong Kong. You no, know, Hong Kong airport was a mess. People were crying. People came from China with tears. And there was the students, there were the activists who were spreading the newspapers and news tell the terrible things happening in Beijing. And those people were escaping out of China right at the Hong Kong airport. It was very chaotic. And I was at the moment of making my sort of life important decision whether should I continue my flying back to home at that moment. And then the loudspeaker of the, uh, uh, the, the airport, uh, Kim Peng Sein, uh, this is the only Cantonese I know speaking my name, Xiao Kang. Xiao Kang, uh, uh, Mr. Xiao Kang, please come to the, 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 the phone. Picking up the phone, is, is, is this, and this is the operator of the airline, of the airport. And she was saying, are you Mr. Selkan? I said, yes. So you have a friend calling you from the United States asking you to not go to China. So please not get on the airplane. I told the operator, I said, well, I already decided to go. So just tell my friend I already left. So I hand up the phone, I came back to the uh, uh, waiting area, and f 10 minutes later, the loudspeaker announcing my name again. And I pick up the phone, the same operator saying, so I talked to the operator, said, look, I already left, just tell my friend don't call me again. She said, are you Mr. Xiao Kang? I said, yes. Can I talk to you? I said, what? May I ask you from me that please don't go. It's dangerous. And this is a Hong Kong girl with a Cantonese accent that I will always remember the warm voice. I did went back to China, which you know, later on my life turns different, and now I'm standing here. But this is Hong Kong for me 25 years ago. For someone took a small act of action, and that's a warm moral support from the people here. Um, I cannot help 
that 25 years later, I would share this with all of you at this point. So now what I do, I watch Chinese internet. I follow the story of how internet changing China and how the Chinese state controlling the internet. I listen to what I call netizens, that millions and millions of them, the voices every day. I watch the Chinese censor in action, how they delete the posts, how they block websites, how they even delete accounts and harassing people or even arresting people. But I have watched over the last 10 years, the voice of the internet has been rising and rising and rising. It's a voice for freedom. I live in California, but I'm hanging in this Chinese cyberspace every day. I spend as much same time as any Chinese internet junkie that social media on Weibo, on Weixin, on BBS. It's my way to connect it to China. But it's also to answer a question, to understand today, 25 years later, we skip a big story, right? the rise of China. The powerful, uh, gigantic power of China has been raised. And the internet is part of that story. But here, the voices on the internet tell me something more than just that economic force, that tremendous transformation in that largest population of the land. It is also a voice for the truth in China for young generation particularly. And I will tell you a couple of stories sharing, uh, probably uh, using images and videos about this. Um, I'm not gonna be able to to go over my researches and my, uh, my, uh, my website, which sort of mapping those online discourses. But you see this flag instead of a stars, right? It's, it's called river crab, it's crab. The crab in China, in Chinese, in Mandarin, Putonghua, it also has a meaning of a bully, someone who get their way in power by force, right? Um, and this came also in Putonghua from this harmonious, 和谐社会, harmonious society. It sounds exactly the same, river crab, harmonious, it's all the same. Uh, so the, um, and, and the Chinese online languages, when say there's a cr river crab, it really means a censor. It means you're censoring my content, my voices, in the name of harmonize, harmonize it. And the building a harmonious society. It's an online sub-political lingo to say, the censor, the state, the party is the one, the river crab, that ruling our space, violating our freedom, and taking away from what we already deserve. Um, and this is a, is a map, what I call the power map of Chinese internet. If you see the left corner, if that's called Chinese Communist Party Propaganda Department, CCTV right on the, on the, on the corner, this space is what I called the resisting space, the, uh, 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 the internet social media space, because this is a political spectrum. This is a legitimacy, discourse, propaganda. This is more reform, this is resistance. This is what they're forbidden on the internet. And on this vertical axiom, you see this is traditional form of media, this is internet social media, and here's a great firewall. So the most lively contents and actions every day, even at this very minute, on Sina Weibo, on Weixin, uh, on BBS, on, on all these places, uh, Ren Ren, are happening in those social media spaces despite of the censorship. And my project here, China Geo Times, is trying to document, index, recurate such constant unceasing struggle between the censorship and the resistance and those voices from what I call Chinese netizens. Chinese internet has many things. There's what I call the main melody, the official Chinese 
government propaganda version of how powerful and uh, modern uh, 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 the Chinese state is. Uh, and there's a coded resistance uh, sometimes happening to the more reform mind critical media. But really, what's on Chinese internet to me is a simple story, a struggle between grass mud horse and a river crab, Cao Ni Ma, is what the uh, uh, Chinese uh, phrase will say. This, this, this uh, uh, metaphor came several years ago. Many of you probably know of, the, of that. But it provided uh, grass mud horse uh, in, in Chinese, Cao Ni Ma, actually sounds almost similar. It's a very vicious curse uh, 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 that uh, uh, when you say that, you almost express your ex explicitly your frustration and your, your, your resent to the daily life living under the censorship. Um, but this kind of resistance and a symbol of resistance means a lot. It illuminates, it magnifies the constant revolution on the Chinese cyberspace that people wants to speak out and choose and then being uh, involved in this struggle. So let me sort of refresh ourselves in this uh, 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 original song that came out from the Guasamata horse fighting against the river crab. It's made by Chinese netizens. It sounds a little bit juvenile, but it's much more than that. If you live in the Chinese cyberspace, or if you're living in China, if you're living under that powerless, you cannot petition, you cannot appeal, but only have a submissive and humiliated situation. Then at that point, this kind of symbol will come out, which is a revolt against such irremediable. It's an imperable innocence of this little animal, but with a vicious curse to express you, and with this story, give you a promised victory in the future, which is those grass mountain horses will take back their homeland and defeat the ruling invaders called river crabs. It's a song for freedom. And in that, my project has been documenting this what I call the resistance discourse on the Chinese internet. If you go to China Digital Times, you will see there is a, a what we call river craft. What is, it's a deleted content from Chinese internet. Like what? Like this, right? This is Mrs. Peng Liyuan, the uh, first lady in China, the wife of a president, uh, uh, Xi Jinping, who is also a singer for PLA. But this photo, it's been viciously deleted in China because it shows 1989, in June, Mrs. Peng Liyuan went to the Tiananmen Square singing for the soldiers who just executed that crackdown on Tiananmen. It's part of history. They do not want the people know. But this is the Chinese lady, first lady today. We have a column called Sensitive words. It's the banned search keywords in Sina Weibo or on the uh, Great Firewall uh, using Google if you live in China. And we have documented over 2,000 those keywords that many of them relevant to the current news event. The latest one will be Mao Ming in Guangdong, the, the environmental protection and the violence crackdown. And then the banned search keywords to not allow the Chinese internet to have access to related information in Chinese cyberspace. We document that. 
to reveal, you know, there's a te technical means behind it, but to reveal such a censorship and trace of a censorship is an act of resistance itself. Now, the directive of the Ministry of Truth. It came from propaganda department or came from uh, State Council of Information Office, today called National Information Office. On a daily basis, sometimes on an hourly basis, those directives come to the media, come to the, uh, 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 um, send to the, the website that what to promote, what to delete, and what to watch in their reporting. These are secrets of the Chinese state. They never let people know what they don't want people to know. However, those directives today are regular leaks in the Chinese internet. Who leaks them? Chinese social media, uh, Chinese journalists. Was that dangerous? It is. And some people have got 10 years prison 10 years ago for action like that. But is this a act of defiance to action for freedom? Yes. And by that, by validating such directives, by publicizing them and organizing them, China Digital Times, my publication now, has over 2,000 those directives in the past five years. Show you a picture of the Chinese ruler, what they don't want people to know in China. And of course, there's a great firewall. We have a list of over 28,000 websites being blocked by the Chinese Great Firewall and categorize them to tell the world what kind of website they are blocking. Right? We all know YouTube, Twitter, uh, Blogger, you name it. Uh, uh, the, any user-generated content that they cannot control. So. We document and uh, construct those what are called grass mask lexicon, which is online political lingos. Uh, I, I probably don't have time to go into those online political languages and vocabularies, but I'll show you a couple of video to give you an idea what kind of those online contents are lively, dynamically being spread, going viral, and being censored on a daily basis in the internet. So the next one I think I want to show you is, it's not a new video. It's a, and those kind of resistance goes on in China, um, not only from uh, uh, the marginalized activists or, or dissidents or active advocates, it's from every level of the life. The next I'm showing to you is an internal uh, video uh, party, actually a New Year, Chinese New Year party uh, by CCTV, Chinese Central Television staff. These are party propaganda machine mouthpieces, national faces, TV anchors, broadcasting those uh, party news. Everybody know they are the mouthpiece of the party. But in their internal entertainment party, they have a different face. And what you're going to show is their, their, own, their own little program and using a song, what we, a Sui Jian, Chinese song called, it's not that I don't understand. And to express what they feel their own daily life is. In the disguise of, um, <laughs> it's in the disguise of a, uh, <laughs>
别擦了。This is the Chinese CCTV national anchors are expressing themselves what they really feel about what they're broadcasting. And this video is quite a few years ago, and of course it went viral online, leaked, and then being strictly censored in China because they don't want people to know the other face of the truth. But there's more and more people speaking out with the social media, with the blogs and the social blogs. We all know Han Han, you know Li Chengpeng, you know Ren Zhiqiang, who is a real, uh, a real estate tycoon, you know Zhuo Xiao Zhuzhou, who is a, a musician, and Xu Xin is a law professor. There's people from all across of the life uh, expressing politically for more liberal demands in China. And this is no more a small side stories. Mm -hmm. This is the mainstream public opinion if you go down to Sina Weibo, despite all the censorship. So what I call the from grass mud horse to citizen. Citizen here implies, in, in Chinese context, it has a political uh, 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 connotation. It, it implies citizen has political rights. Yeah. And it's a new relationship you, you imagine between the citizen and the state, which the people of the Republic of China doesn't really have. Um, but this is what they are talking. And they're saying, the next one is a song that uh, uh, written by Li Chengpeng, who is a author and very, very popular blogger. And uh, Zhuo Xiao Zhuzhou is a musician living in Beijing. And this is a song. Okay, we'll start from the beginning. We, we pay so much taxes. But all our taxes became their banquets. We pay taxes because we just don't want to be destroyed by them. We pay taxes, so actually we're bribing them. But they don't deliver. Are they too much? There's no return to our money, are way too cheap. I don't know how to translate English. Son of bitch. It's a weakening of the political rights in China. And this consciousness awakening, it's happening on the internet every day and to reach to more and more people. Yes, we do see a powerful state that exercising, yeah, it's, it's brutal force to its own people, to the neighbors, and expanding, threatening the freedom everywhere. But I also see through the internet, those voice of freedom, the action, the passion, the creativity, the human nobility are being restored through those songs, those words. And even in the face of censorship, it represents a hope of China. I'm showing you a last bit of video, and I'll stop from here. And this video is from an online game community, the Chinese gamers, Warcraft ga uh, uh, gamers. Uh, um, they, play, they play their online games. And then again, the state, yeah, for their own interest agencies and disrupted the, the, the services, and they revoke and made this movie through the game characters to express how they feel towards the censor. And this is gonna be my last video.
And this is a character as a sensor. Now you know my power, the sensor said. But the player said, you're facing people's wall. Everyone watch this video. Please raise your hand. I need your power with me. I know when they block Twitter, you didn't raise your hand. When they block Fanfo, you didn't raise your hand. But now we're going to lose our game. We are all powerless people. And in front of such an amount of power, whatever we do, we cannot save our game. But at least in front of your computer, your screen, you can raise your hand. So raise your hand. Is everybody numb? Every heart is dead? We were as innocent as you. We thought of this as a garden. We thought that we can reach for ideal. And those people who said they serve us, and they impose so-called happiness on us. But now, we have nowhere to go. We can only use the internet to communicate with each other. And now, they still trying to repress us and censoring us. We're used to this. We used to silence. But now, It's not only happening in the game world, it's happening right now at this minute in China. This is a picture in Mao Ming, environmental protection. Go online, find their voices. When I came here to this speech this noon, I passed some protesters says, the X against the walls. Yes, these small acts of resistances are X. And that powerful state is the wall. Can X really defeat the wall? But as a nation, People's Republic of China, it's a light self. It's never people's. It's never a republic. Chinese Communist Party have nothing about communism today. People's Liberation Army doesn't liberate people. It repress people. People's Congress does not represent people. There's no people on earth can live in a lie for all the time. Not a mind China, not a civilization we proud, ancient, and glorious. Not any people, not Ukraine, not Egyptians, not Tunisia, not Taiwan, not anywhere, not Chinese people can live in a lie all the time. 
So speak truth to the rising power, and the truth will prevail. Thank you. As you know, 2014 in Spring is, uh, as I treat it, is a uh, milestone in Hong Kong's press freedom. And we, Hong Kong JA, is very busy uh, during the period, as you know. Because of aspects of the recent incidents has undermined press freedom and freedom of expression in Hong Kong. Of course, including the replacement of Ming Post chief editors and the uh, outspoken ex commercial radio talk show host, Li Wei Ling, was dismissed by the management. And of course, the most serious case is uh, the former chief editors of Mingpo, Kevin Lau. The Lau's case not, has not only seriously threatened the city's press freedom, but has also influenced Pawn our human rights. This is because human beings should be free from fear. It is only when journalists are free from fear that they are able to report and give the full prey to the full estates. Uh, on behalf of Amnesty International Hong Kong, I'd like to thank all of you here and I would like to extend our warmest welcome to all of you because I would see this award as one of the most uh, crucial Hong Kong human rights movement. So it has been for so many years, we have been dedicating your efforts, your uh, passion towards human rights movement. Media is actually very useful when we talk about human rights situations and human rights movement, especially we need to uh, alert the people who are in suppressions. They may not be able to access the internet, such as those who are deprived, who are in uh, poverty. So we still need your effort from the traditional media to work very hard. And we thank you for all your efforts. When you are reporting any human rights related news, you are actually not just a reporter or just a journalist. You are actually a human rights defender. So you are putting yourself into double vulnerability against the human rights violators and the, and the states and the governments who are trying to suppress our freedom of speech and freedom of press. Now we go on to the prizes. And in the news category, a prize goes to Jim Yardley of the International New York Times for his series on the Bangladesh factory conditions. There are two merits in the news category. One goes to Jennifer Goh of the South China Morning Post, Jeff Deaf Generation Lost in Translation. The next merit goes to Verna Yu for her body of work. She has presented a vast body of work on human rights abuses. Uh, it's about prostitutes who are vulnerable to police abuse. What will replace re-education through labor? The abused wives in Hong Kong who are denied justice and an elderly p uh, couple in China who refused to give up their dreams of freedom. Verna Yu from the South China Morning Post. Now we go on to the features. It's a series of stories done on inheriting China's problems, parents, children, and the authoritarian, uh, authoritarian state. This uh, uh, prize goes to the Washington Post, uh, William Wan of the Washington Post. Again, under the category features, a merit goes to Wu Nan of the South China Morning Post for her story on a mother's hard labor of love. Then in the magazine category, we have a prize going to Hannah Beach of Time Magazine. The story is Face of Buddhist Terror. Drugs Won't Work by Krista Mahar, again of the Time Magazine. Samuel Lai uh, and uh, Mark Chung of Time Out Hong Kong for Hong Kong's refugee shame. But wait, there's hope. Now we move on to the online category, prizes. For Amu Kanampali of Agence France Press, the children who work in India's rat hole coal mines, 
Then China's quiet rebellions, Wen Xin Fan and Neil Western of Bloomberg News. India's shame by Andrew Maxkill and Vibhudatta Pradhan of Bloomberg News once again. Youth interrupted, underage illiterate breadwinners, a story by Jonah Kessel and Patrick Wynn, Global Post. In the online category, we move on to the merit. It goes to Charlotte Turner of Agence France Press once again for her story, Four Years After the War, Sri Lanka's Widows Fear Rape. Now we move on to television, and the first one goes to Lin Lee and James Leong of Al Jazeera on the story on Yukon. Robin Forstier Walker of Al Jazeera once again for unhealed wounds of Osh Kyrgyzstan. Sectarian divide in Pakistan, Yara Bo Malham of Al Jazeera once again. Murder in God's Name in Pakistan, Evan Williams of Al Jazeera. And Scars of Sri Lanka, once again, Evan Williams of Al Jazeera. Sylvia Yu of TVB Pearl for her body of work on slick savory in Hong Kong, China, and Thailand. It's a series. Lisa Cohen of CNN Freedom Project, uh, Every Day in Cambodia. Subina Shrestha of Al Jazeera for her story on Nepal slave girls, young girls. Then last but not least, we have a merit for Teresa Siu of CCTV China, the first time I'm told that somebody from China ever submitted anything for these awards. And now I give the rewards so on the uh, Chinese uh, print awards. Zhong Men Sun Men Dai Jiang, ah, 就係呢一個嘅名報 Chinese Language News Prize， 就香港芭蕾舞團涉及呢個自我審查嘅風波嘅。誒，恭喜名報嚇。Zhong Men Sun Men Yu Yi Jiang， 誒，馬頭公朝風雲系列。誒、呃、得獎嘅係《星島日報》，記者係黃東亮、趙燕婷、劉愛瑩、童傑同埋盧顯良。另外一個係四大發展商東北團地分佈曝光，得獎嘅係《蘋果日報》呃。誒記者係韓耀廷、林偉聰、袁柏欣。中文特寫大獎《Chinese Language Futures Prize》得獎嘅係《明報偵查組》。個作品題目係。赴活躍民運牽連地區，十歲良心犯，不怕監控，怕爸爸被找。中文特寫優異獎，誒、呃、明報嘅譚慧雲小姐，阿佔領中環對談系列 ，AM 七三零誒簡淑明記者嚇，堅持説真話，中央眼中的壞孩子，情益中，寧做被迫害的人，不做幸福的豬。而家頒發中文雜誌優異獎。Chinese language magazine 啊，呢、这個嘅尋找爸爸的故事，得獎嘅係一週刊，記者係姚志賢、高仲明，東週刊記者林俊賢、李志榮，機機密表格曝光，揭政府部門索網民資料兒戲，陽光時務週刊就記者係張潔平、楊光、洪威、沈益、黃馬。莫莫之許個題目係抗命宣傳部南州事件系列，跟住嚟頒發中文評論優異獎。誒、呃、得獎嘅係《陽光時務週刊》長評反擊宣傳部。中文卡通圖解優異獎就得獎係《蘋果日報》美術美術組，狼英治下嘅二零一三。啊，以下頒發嘅係啊。中文電視新聞報導嘅獎項，誒，頒發之前成日講講，今次我哋睇到嘅作品其實誒好多都係講關於內地嘅維權嘅事件嘅。咁我諗呢個都係香港傳媒嘅一個好重要嘅一個角色。我媽媽無罪，蔡玉玲，香港電台電視部鄉村站。中文電視新聞報導優異獎。
，中國人民系列之舉國體制擺脱體制，陳偉利，撈新聞台，少數族裔女生班，鄭思思，有線電視，半世紀勞教，許少芬。無線電視《星期日檔案》南州事件，林建成，公安也維權胡力漢，有線電視。然之後今次誒嚟到嘅係中文電台報道優二獎，誒、呃、兩個優二獎今次就冇設大獎嘅，因為誒、呃、我哋誒、呃、評判之間一路揀都誒、呃、我哋嘅討論都誒揾唔到一個係誒、呃、應該係大獎嘅，咁但係誒、呃、優二獎係。香港電台蘇敬行嘅兩個古仔，一個古仔係村鎮家長改口風，感謝國家，感謝黨；另外一個係抗日老兵心係祖國，其承認身份還鄉。香港電台嘅蘇敬行。Um, the judges were very happy with the、uh, the level of, of entries we got this year. A, they increased the numbers, and B, I think the overall quality definitely、um, went up as well. And,、um, Which, which you can see because、um, we found it impossible to determine one winner in, in, in the category, so we decided to go for two instead.、Uh, Lo Kwan Ho of Apple Daily for HKTV staff and 100 citizens light up the night. Seeing you of、uh, Apple Daily as well,、uh, scholarism pushes、uh, CY Lang on universal suffrage. So moving on to the merits in、uh, Spot News. So、um, the、uh, first one goes to Edward Wong of South China Morning Post: Chronic corruption behind village uprisings. Next one again to Edward: Tears of an actress. The, the next prize goes to Chen Kogyin for Dutch workers' strike. South China Morning Post: David Wong, protester in a wheelchair, protecting candles in the rain. Li Chek Chung of Mingpao. Mingpao,、uh, Lo Yek Ming, City U clears the way for Chief Executive. Second merit、um, to Lo Yek Ming as well、uh, for education protests in the rain. So Chang Yek Chu of Apple Daily, Rain of Tears. To Lo Kwan Ho of Apple Daily, see why long supporters attack protesters. For non-local parents, queue for children school admi admission. Anger over TV licensing. Uh, we stay with Apple Daily. Ho Pakai for policeman grabs female protester. Apple Daily again. Chang Yek Chu, postgraduate student support dock workers. Moving on to the winners in the、uh, feature photography, Law、uh, Lan、uh, Yong of East Week for a serious、uh, transsexual angel. Coffin Room,、um, Dixon Lee of South China Morning Post. Moving to to the merits. The first one goes to Sam、uh, Sam Chang, a makeshift home in a slum, health of the poor, an urgent case. Chen Kok Ying, for tackling poverty below the line.、Um, of South China Morning Post. Next merit goes to a serious、um, uh, Bangladesh factory collapse by Munir Uz Zaman of、uh, Agence France Presse. Li Chak Chung of Mingpao. A window on the rooftop. Another prize to Mingpo,、uh, Lo Yek Ming.、Uh, the media are kidnapped. Another merit, the outsider, also for Lo Yek Ming. Wong Tak Kin of East Week, a gay parade proposal. The last、uh, merit in the、uh, feature photography、uh, merits goes to a series of images scavenging by、uh, Tan Chi Wing of Mingpo. Thank you very, very much.、Um, we are going to take some questions and answers with our guest speaker. You can ask in English or Putonghua. Chagang, thanks a lot for a great presentation. My name is Mark Zawadzki. I work in Hong Kong for different Russian media. So I have two questions for you. Like one is,、uh, do you have any idea about how many people in China are, are using VPNs or other means to jump the town, right, to to Tiangchang? Mm -hmm. um, it's like the first question. And second question,、uh, uh, I was wondering if you are following events not only in China but but in other countries. Like Russia is also having these problems now with internet censorship. So I, I was wondering if, if if you can comment on、um, like whether Russia is in danger as well. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, thank, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Your question is how, as my, my estimation actually, yeah, uh, uh, the population of using VPN or other means to uh, circumvent the internet blocking in China. Uh, again, it's only estimation. Um, VPN is the most common used uh, practices uh, because it's a commercially used and using for universities, foreign companies. Uh, therefore, the Chinese uh, Great Firewall is not um, completely cut off the VPN usage, particularly for the commercial use uh, of it. Um, but then they do disrupt some of the non-commercial free VPN usages. Um, the regular circumventors, you know, from different estimations, uh, my conservative number will be at least at the millions, yeah, at the level of millions. Um, particularly including the people who use the foreign, uh, uh, the uh, international hosting space to set up their own VPN, which is small software, the technical capable people can do it, and then they share with friends, that kind of small traffic, usually the Great Firewall doesn't bother to, to block. Um, and then there are free softwares uh, uh, to, to do so in proxies. So altogether, um, uh, I would say the conservative uh, number is, is the number of millions. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I follow China is my, my uh, all the time. I, I don't, I have a very general knowledge about Iran or lit Russia, I actually don't because the only, Internet censorship situation rel com relatively comparable to China is Iran. So I follow a little bit. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Tang Biao, a human rights lawyer from China. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. Hello, I'm very happy to meet you today. Uh, uh, you mentioned that in China, the internet 呃，用各种各样的方式来和这个啊 GFW 抗争，呃，那么呃，作为人权律师，我们也是啊、呃，这个站住在第一线，我们呃呃也用用很多策略啊，代理很多敏感案件、人权案件。但是从去年呃以来，有一些呃被认为相对温和的一些呃人权捍卫者，像许志勇、像伊利哈姆。呃，一些一些人，这个啊呃，数以十啊、呃、数以百计的人，啊、呃，在去年被捕。那么，我想请呃肖先生评论一下，呃，这个呃是不是代表了一个呃新的趋势？如何理解这背后中央的一些呃策略 ？I I'm going to answer in 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 Chinese。滕彪呃，很高兴见到你，向你致敬，也向这个在中国国内的呃每天每时每刻。哎，在专制下，这个争取人权和自由的，呃，不管是人权律师也好，活动分子也好，呃，这个还是普通的任何网民和中国公民，呃，我在网上看到，呃，跟踪他们的，呃，行动，听到他们的声音，啊、呃，心里一直是充满着敬意。呃，我虽然在这个争取呃人权、民主、自由的这样的这个，呃，整个的呃运动里头。有的声音比较高，说要反对一党专制，要结束一党专制；有的声音比较低，说是这个比较温和，说我们坚持中国的法治，或者说坚持公民社会的组织，哎，通过这样的形式争取中公民的权利，啊，最后一步一步的实现中国的民主、政治和自由。对，啊，那是还有更温和的，可以说啊，希望在体制内部啊推动一些变化，等等等等。但是总的来说啊，徐志勇，比如说你提到的。呃呃，这个伊利哈姆他们相对来说在呃政治主张上啊、呃，似乎比较温和，哎，比较中性。但实际上，在专制者的眼里头，没有太大区别。他们只认为谁对他们的威胁最大。对，不管你的声音是要结束专制，还是你的行为是要争取最起码的公民权利，但是到最最征求最起码的公民权利，呃，如果是得到了广泛的支持，它必然会导致要这个。呃呃，否定专制的合法性这样一个诉求，对。那么，在专制者的眼里头，只有谁对他们的威胁啊、呃、更大啊、呃？没有这个叫做呃所谓温和和激进之分，对。那么，之所以从去年以来有大规模的这种镇压、逮捕的行动，包括这些啊、呃，我们认为是比较温和的声音，啊、呃，在我看来，一方面说明这些声音正在中国社会不断壮大
，对，他们和那些呃比较激烈的要求也好，更公投的要求是一样的，是是同样是最后是推向中国走向这个自由的一部分。那么在这种声音壮大的时候，呃呃，对于专制者来说，需要控制这个社会，需要维持他的一党专制的地位啊、呃，包括这个现在的中国国家主席习近平，他明确的表示了，这个维护他的一党统治是他的最基本的使命。那么在这样的情况下。啊啊，这个他下面的专政机关，啊，对这些这些正在壮大的声音，啊，采取更严厉的镇压措施，这个也是，应当说是可以预料的，对，啊，在中国呃人争取争民主自由的这么多年的历史上，只要有前进，最后还就会有镇压和有人会付出代价；只要有更大的进步，同时也会有导致专制者更强烈的反扑。这样的过程，只有到了最后。专制结束的那一刻，才能结束这个循环。不然的话，不管是刘晓波，还是徐志勇，啊，还是伊丽哈姆，我们会看到更多的人，不管是激烈的还是温和的，呃，会受的啊，付出这样的代价，啊，所以我说这些的时候，在这儿也是心里对这些正在受难的人心里充满敬意。Does anyone else have any more questions for our speaker? Okay, well, thank you very much for attending today, and um, I hope to see you next year. Thank you.